Hi guys, it's the Plant Ninja and I am here with a friend and colleague of mine, John. Do you want me to share with them what your superhero alter ego is? No. <laughs> I will tell y'all later. <laughs> anyway, John um, is a coffee aficionado. He actually also has a coffee plant, which we tried to put in the shot, but here it is. So we're going to talk a little bit about what it takes to really grow a coffee plant. Clearly, Central Texas is probably not a coffee plant growing area, but um, the, he is growing his indoors, and we'll briefly talk about how to do that if you're interested. Um, we'll also talk about um, just some history and interesting facts about coffee uh, that I didn't know. And then we're going to have a most delightful garden tour at the end, so stay tuned for that. There we are, Graf and our Yetis. They'll both be very hot. Okay. And you don't want it too hot because then you'll burn the coffee. But you okay. want so you are preheating your carafe and mugs. Yeah. It's a super serious. Actually, this is chicory root. Chicory root. What and is chicory root? Chicory root. It's basically it's just a plant, and this is the root of it. And it's used a lot in New Orleans to add flavor. I'm not big on the flavor of chicory, but. If you coat the bottom of the filter mm -hmm. with the chicory root, it'll absorb the acid from the coffee, Ooh. make it less acidic and make okay. it smoother. It'll have a smoother taste to it. You'll put the beans in. I can see the beans brine like right before you drink it. It'll and so this is already, flavor. this has got the grinder in it. It has a grinder in it. Okay. All right, can we give a local shout out to the so this is actually Arusha coffee from Belton. All right. Um, the beans themselves, uh, these are uh, uh, Chiapas, which is, uh, which is in Mexico. One of my favorite beans. Okay, now the important question as well is, what is your coffee to water ratio? I just mix it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't figure it out. <laughs> this is like cooking with my grandmother, till it looks right. That's right. <laughs> here. Mix air in with the uh, creamer so mm -hmm. it makes the froth. You like the tiny little so you don't tiny just, bubbles. You don't stick you it right at the bottom. You're kind of no. bringing it up to the top. Correct. To yeah, incorporate the air. air. Makes sense. And actually the smaller the bubbles the better. Okay. So that makes them more dense. Spin it around. So but you're kind of putting it on the edges. Yeah. We'll go to the middle here in just a second. Like, I can't have my lid on here because it's going to mess up my foam action. These are Woken Pods, and they are compatible with the original Nespresso line machines. They're 100% compostable, and apparently they break down within about 90 days in your compost pile. And indoor care is not that difficult. If you start getting into outdoor care and you're interested in growing a, a harvest, so to speak, of coffee beans, then it's going to be challenging. I was given this plant uh, for uh, Christmas, actually, by our daughter-in-law. And we keep it fairly moist. You'll see uh, that the ground is fairly moist. And you want as much uh, humidity as you can get indoors. I don't get real compulsive about it. You can put pebbles in the bottom, which I have not done, in order to increase the humidity. Um, use a balanced fertilizer in order to get this thing to grow indoors. If you're gonna go outdoors, then it's gonna be a lot more uh, labor intense. Uh, you look at various substances to put in the soil to keep it growing outdoors, because there is, uh, you know, we have the heat here in Texas. Um, the little brown things on the end are actually not a problem. Uh, that's kind of part of the natural growth um, and changes that occur with a coffee plant. Uh, if the brown starts to get on the inside towards the center of the leaves, then, then it's going to be a little bit of a problem. And you, 
uh, you have to be careful about losing your plant. Um, if I'm lucky, in about three years, this may produce a few beans, not enough to make a pound, but enough to kind of mix in with some of the uh, other beans that I, that I get, grind them up and have some homemade coffee. One of the facts that people kind of get confused about is that a coffee plant is actually a bush. It's not a tree. Most people think it's a tree, but it is actually a bush. Question. Sorry, I'm enjoying my delightful cup of coffee that was made this morning. Um, how often would you say you have to water this? Because you're keeping this obviously indoors. Mm -hmm. So would you say you are doing sort of the test where you just see how moist the soil is? Or are you on a schedule where you're doing about once a week? That's a great question. Do a couple of things. Like you mentioned, it is indoors, so it gets indirect light. We keep it by the window, so we'll get that indirect light. Uh, during the winter, water it less, maybe once a week or so. During the summer, I'll actually look at the leaves. And if they start to droop a little bit, I'll add some water to it, and they tend to perk up pretty quickly. Um, the potting is also really different on a coffee plant than it is, I guess, on most plants, and that um, you need to wait until it outgrows the plant. In other words, this is I've, I've replanted this one once. It was given to me in a coffee cup, and it wasn't until I started seeing the roots started crowding around the edges that I that I went ahead and replanted that. So you shouldn't replant it until you absolutely have to replant that uh, that pot. Um, some people, if they notice that it's not getting enough moisture or enough humidity, will take it into the shower or you know, let it sit on the, uh, near the sink while they take a hot shower, or let the humidity from that kind of, part, uh, kind of um, perk it up some. This is actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually grown some new branches and some new leaves. You'll see the new growth in here that's very green. Okay, and so um, I tried to do a little bit of reading because I have like zero experience with growing a coffee plant, but. Um, I do see that if you are interested in growing one outdoors, it's probably going to be something that you need to bring in unless you're mm -hmm. in the extreme tropics. But really, it, it looks like the temperature needs to be between about 59 and 75 degrees. Right. Um, and so if you're going to grow it outdoors, I'm assuming that probably the best thing to do would be to grow it in a container where you can bring it in. Correct. So That's correct. And even in, even in our area, if it starts to get cold in February, in February. <laughs> we'll go ahead and move it away from that window to let it stay a little bit warmer. Okay, got it. Um, one of the other things I heard you mention was that you really need to let that plant get almost root bound within the pot before you right. repot it. So this is not something you're trying to give a lot of room. It seems like it's happier in a crowded. It is. The roots are happier, kind of crowded. So something else to keep in mind so and if you look at your real quality coffees they're shade grown in other words though the coffee plant is actually grown under other trees okay like a canopy right so enough sunlight but indirect sunlight is what I hear you saying in terms exactly. of sun needs uh, so it, this is probably not a plant if you are gonna grow it outside that you want out in the full Sun correct okay got it okay, okay. So, um, John has graciously offered to give uh, a brief history of coffee and just some um, useful facts that, like I said, I wasn't aware of. So I'm going to let you take it away. There's actually the legend of coffee. You know, it can't be verified, but the legend of coffee is that in the ninth century, a, a goat farmer named Kaldi, who was in Ethiopia, saw that his goats were eating the red cherry beans or the red coffee beans and uh, seemed to be happier and dancing around and being more energetic than the goats that did not eat the red coffee beans. So he took a few, chewed them up himself and found that it made him happy and gave him more energy. He took the coffee beans to the local uh, religious leader, uh, told him the story and the religious leader felt that this was horribly inappropriate uh, and that the coffee beans were actually evil. Threw them into the fire and as the coffee beans started to roast, they created the aroma. So a happy aroma. A happy aroma. <laughs> so other shamans came and smelled the coffee beans, raked the coffee beans out, ground them up, mixed them with water, and that was the first cup of coffee. I love the smell of coffee in the morning. I'm instantly just, it's like a morale boost for me. So. It is for me as well. Mm -hmm. It does wake you up. In fact, that's one of the interesting things. 
Uh, as far as coffee facts go, uh, if you want to get the most boost out of your coffee, well, first of all, coffee after you drink it generally gets absorbed about 45 minutes after you drink the coffee. It'll hit its peak as far as the caffeine goes about 60 to 75 minutes after, after ingestion, depending on what's in your stomach. When we wake up, we actually get a burst of a couple of hormones called adrenaline as well as cortisone that keep us awake. If you want to get a super boost out of coffee, you drink it right when you get up. And the caffeine will actually add to those hormones to make you more energetic. If you want to have a longer lasting energy level, you wait about 45 minutes after those hormones start to decrease in the blood. And then you get the kick of the caffeine and you get a longer and more sustained energy level. Okay, so I have heard there's this thing called a nappuccino. Have you heard of this? Yes. Okay, so apparently this is where you drink your coffee or your cappuccino latte espresso, and then you take a nap. And by the time you, now short nap, like less, like less than about an hour. And then by the time you wake up, the coffee will have kicked in and you're more energetic and you got a nap in, so. That That's exactly sense. right. Yeah, okay. no, no, it makes, it makes perfect sense. Remember, the half-life of coffee is about six hours. Okay. So uh, it'll give you that energy for uh, roughly six hours afterwards. Good. Now, the downside to that is that coffee keeps you awake. I mean, that's why a lot of us drink coffee. About, well, 60% of people, of Americans do what we're doing right now, which yeah. is drink a cup of coffee in the morning. So if you drink coffee within six hours of going to bed, and most people, it will cause a sleep disturbance. Okay, so got to avoid it within six hours. Avoid of it within six hours of going to bedtime. Okay, that's good advice. That's good advice. Um, any other useful facts about coffee that you want to share with us? Well, there are a lot of useful facts about coffee. It's, it's the most consumed drink in the world outside of water. As far as producers go, Brazil is actually the largest producer. Americans drink more cups of coffee than any other coffee in the world. Um, per capita, it's really interesting. It used to be the Scandinavian countries, such as Holland, Sweden, Finland. Uh, this year, actually this month, uh, a Middle Eastern country, Lebanon, actually overtook them as far as per capita coffee consumption. Now, you are Lebanese. And I am Lebanese, right. Okay. Right. So, and we love our so coffee. So, you came by it honestly. I did come by <laughs> it honestly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, there's up to about 400 milligrams of coffee is probably safe according to the FDA for, for most people, for most people. Obviously that'll be adjusted a little bit depending on people's medical history, but there's about 100 milligrams of caffeine per eight ounces of coffee. There is about 100 milligrams of caffeine per 1.5 ounces or a shot of espresso. Uh, decaf coffee has about 25 milligrams of caffeine in that. Uh, instant coffee, about 62 milligrams of, coffee, of uh, caffeine, rather, in that coffee. And I heard, you know, decaffeinated coffee actually has to go qu through quite a chemical process to become decaffeinated. So it's not necessarily the healthiest option. If you think about it that right. way, you're doing more to the product or processing it more than just drinking it. Right, and, and decaffeinated coffee is not caffeine-free. Yeah. Uh, this is important to realize as well. Yeah, I didn't know that. I yeah, knew it, it went through the really chemical caffeine. process, but I didn't know yeah. it still had a little bit in there. And interestingly enough, the darker the roast, the less caffeine. Roasting actually uh, takes out the caffeine uh, from it. And the lighter the roast, obviously, then the higher is the concentration of the caffeine. Okay. Most people get that backwards. Yeah. Okay, because I really like a medium to light roast coffee. There you now go. maybe I know why. Because mm -hmm. I just really need some energy. <laughs> It's a, <laughs> the, uh, the other interesting fact about coffee is that filtered coffee is healthier than unfiltered. Okay. Unfiltered coffee actually contains a chemical in it uh, that raises cholesterol, so it will increase the risk of heart disease. Uh, filtering actually takes out and filters out that certain chemical, uh, so it's much healthier for you than unfiltered coffee. Unfiltered coffee is a stuff like Turkish coffee, Swedish coffee, um, uh, I think there's some other coffees that are uncommon that I don't even know the names of that are unfiltered. Okay, can I ask you a question? Sure. So I heard about this coffee. I think I might mess up the name. Is it Kopi Luau? Kopi Luau is the most expensive coffee in the world. It goes for up to $250 a pound. Oh gosh. It's from Indonesia. Okay. And um, they basically, it is given to an animal 
And as the animal excretes the beans, they process the beans, obviously sterilize the beans, filter the beans, and it makes the, the coffee, which is why it's so expensive. There are some concerns as far as animal rights go uh, because they feel like they are force fed to the animals. Um, and also if you force feed that much caffeine to a small animal, it can kill the animal. So there are concerns uh, as far as animal rights groups go. Um, whenever you have something that expensive, you have to worry about counterfeiting. Uh, somebody selling you copy luau for $250 a pound and it's something that was picked off the shelf. Um, so there's some, uh, there's some legitimate concerns about copy luau. Yeah, okay. Uh, I wonder who decided that that would be a good idea. I have absolutely no <laughs> idea. <laughs> In the United States, interestingly enough, there are about 400 million cups of coffee drank per day. Mm -hmm. Now, during the pandemic, which is interesting, the number of people that drank coffee actually decreased. It went from just over 60% to about 58%. But the overall quantity of coffee actually increased, which tells you that the people who are drinking coffee are drinking much more of it. There's some myths about coffee. One is that it actually increases arrhythmia or irregular heart rhythms. That's now been found to be not true, unless you go over the 400 milligrams a day, in which case that can happen. Uh, it actually decreases the risk of heart failure. Okay. Interestingly, if it's not a treatment, so don't go out and you know think I can treat my heart failure by drinking a lot of coffee because it, it won't happen. Um, you saw us pouring the, or we'll see us pouring some of the espresso into the garden. Caffeine is actually a pesticide. Uh, so that's, but it's not harmful to humans unless it has, unless you drink it in large quantities, which is why it's harmful. Um, so the coffee plant actually developed the caffeine in order to protect itself from insecticides. Robusta and Arabica coffee are two different kinds. Arabica coffee is grown at a higher elevation. Robusta is grown at a lower elevation. Robusta coffee will actually have more caffeine in it because there's more insects at the lower elevations than there are at the higher elevations. Okay, and I do know that um, I have in the past used co expended coffee grounds in my acid-loving flower beds, um, and it just helps acidify the soil mm -hmm. kind of gradually, so you can kind of mix it in the soil like around your azaleas, your rhododendrons, your gardenias, um, some of those shade loving, acid soil loving plants. So I do try to save my coffee grounds and I think you can go to any um, rotisserie or um, any sort of coffee shop and ask for their expended grounds and they might give you a bag. So you have plenty to work with there. So. Exactly right, exactly right. But overall coffee drinking in moderation, just like anything else is, is healthy for you, numerous benefits. Uh, they've shown that it increases exercise performance, increases concentration. Uh, overdoing it will give palpitations, make people anxious, and we talked about the sleep disturbance that can occur yeah. if it is drunk within six hours of, uh, uh, of, of going to bed. There are some special situations. Pregnancy uh, is recommended that you limit the coffee intake or the caffeine intake to about 200 milligrams a day. Uh, for teenagers, caffeine about 100 milligrams a day. One of the concerns about teenagers is that, I think all of us know, they also get caffeine from different sources, mm -hmm. such as energy drinks, uh, chocolate, and, and other such, such ingestibles. Yeah, Mountain Dew. Correct. So, okay. Well, that is awesome. Okay, I will say this. Um, coffee's probably healthy, but not the way I drink it, which is with a lot of sugar and a lot of cream. <laughs> so <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add? Not really. Well, I so appreciate you having me here. Oh, I love it's your been a pleasure. I mean, this property is gorgeous. You guys are going to get to see it in a little bit. But um, thank you and Sherry so much for allowing me to film here and just for your expertise and sharing a delightful cup of coffee with me. It's been a wonderful, wonderful morning. It's like a beautiful fall day here. So at least fall for Texas, which is what is it like 80 set? degrees yeah it's great <laughs> though this is this is like i almost got my jacket <laughs> uh, i know it's a little bit brisk so anyway um i hope you guys enjoy the video and y'all take care the home was built in 1916 and one of the former owners include dr ac scott one of the founding physicians of scott and white hospital the current owners have had the property for about 20 years and have maintained the property in impeccable condition